Yo, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be covering a sick match cut effect. It's really easy to make and you know what's better? It's completely free to make. Zero paid plugins at all. So I actually use this effect in one of my latest projects called Tough by Kenzo. I'm gonna throw it up on the screen right now so you can kind of see what I done and my version of it. However, I'm gonna teach you the free version because I did use in fact paid plugins, but the base technique is still there. So let's just get straight into it. Yes, guys, we're back in After Effects. I'm going to quickly show you how to do this. I'm going to use this Bishop Snow video. Highly recommend you check him out. One of my favorite artists at the moment. So basically, it's so much more simple than it looks. So I've just snapped about what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bits from the actual music video, right? Where the first frame is the bit that I like, that I want it to be a picture. So that's the first frame of that one. First frame of that one first frame of that one don't worry about the length of these we're going to be getting rid of all this anyway so let's check all the first frames of mine as you can see you can kind of see his eyes quite well in all of them so what we're going to do for every single one go on to right click time freeze frame yeah now do this for every single one and we'll move on to the next step and if I didn't mention it before, this is the two clips I'm working with. I'm going to do the transition in between both of these clips from one to the other. Now, once you apply the freeze frame, you should have something looking like this. We're slowly getting there. Next step. So now what I want you to do is get all of your freeze frame clips and drag them down. Not to one frame, but to two frames. Bring them all together, two frames each, and you should have something looking like this at the end. All right, guys, now you should have something looking like this after all the cuts. Still quite short and still quite choppy, but we're going to fix that. So I'm going to do the match cut to his eye over here. Not both because the camera, focal lengths, different angles, they're all going to be different and we don't want to warp it too much. So I'm going to just magnet it to one eye only. So first thing I'm going to do, get your top layer, go to opacity with T, lower it down to, let's say, I don't know, 40, whatever works for you. Drag the other clip underneath. Use your scale, your rotation, stuff you should already know by now, and just drag it to kind of match, if that makes sense. So just keep dragging until you have a decent looking match. Again, lower if needed. Just keep working with it until you eventually find the perfect sweet spot. You see, I'm going to say around there is fine for me. And then if you look at both of these together, now you have this. See how it's right in the center of his eye that's exactly what we want now quality wise obviously if you're zooming in a lot you're going to have a bit of pixelation but if you're going to add an adjustment layer with some effects over it and it's going really quickly most of the time you won't notice but a lot of the times if you're a music video editor you're going to be dealing with raw footage anyway so you'll have plenty of space to work with as you can see i've lined up both the eyes here now onto the next one just repeat the same process t lower the opacity down just repeat the same process and I'll get back to you after I finish all of them. Okay guys, after matching everything up and looping it, this is what we have. As you can see, all of the eyes are matching right at the middle of that same eye we lined them all up to. It's a nice little effect, but now it's time to spice it up a little bit and add it into our transition. First thing you're gonna do is pre-compose all of that, okay? Then you're gonna duplicate that drag another one to the side and pre-compose both of them. So that means you have double the amount that you did before, if that makes sense. Okay guys, I want you to duplicate that layer that we've just made. Go over to your tools over here, ellipse tool, and let's say around the eye, okay? I want you to put just kind of an ellipse around it. Tweak it to however you want it to be, but again, doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna be kind of tweaking it anyway. So in this case, I'm just gonna do shift and then, oh, sorry. We're going to do shift and make a perfect circle. From there, I'm going to move that circle to, let's say, just about there. That's fine by me. Yeah, just about there. So it's kind of got that as a center. From there, what you're going to do is go to mask and then feather it to, let's say, 100, but we may adjust it later. Go to the bottom layer, go to the metric color then go down to basic correction and lower the exposure so now you just have kind of like a spotlight but we need to make that smoother so just up it a little bit and then make the feather a bit nicer okay so it kind of gives it that effect that it's focusing on the eye without you having to use any plugins or anything it just makes it a lot better than it already is yeah so on to the next step now 
Next step, simply pre-compose both of them. Now, all right guys, now I'm gonna show you how to make a simple transition with zero plugins. I use this so much, I'm just gonna drop the source for you lot anyway, I don't care. So, go onto an adjustment layer, control Alt Y, go back three frames, okay? Cut, three frames forward, three frames in front, cut again, boom and boom. What I want you to add is brightness and contrast and directional blur. These are all built in, so don't even start crying at me. So blur length, brightness and contrast, perfect. Go on to here, control C, control V, right? Go straight into the middle. See, I made a mistake. You want that three frames each, I'm tripping. So brightness, contrast, let's up it, okay? So it's nice. We want it bright. Blur length, let's say, what? 77, fine by me. Let's just F9 all of this. Copy that with Control D, bring it to the middle of this and look what we have now. That's quite good to have in your arsenal when you ain't got any plugins to work with. Now let me drop a little source for you. So, if you feel it's still a bit too fast for you, remember we made two layers, we've got plenty of room to work with. If you want it to be a bit faster, no problem. Instead of going and shortening every single one of these down to one frame, forget that man. All you gotta do is go onto your last pre-comp, time, time stretch, stick it on 50 and boom, that's it, okay? Now after shortening it, this is what we've got. That's quite cool, but in my opinion, it's too fast. So I'm gonna up it to let's say 75, a happy medium between the two, all right? And this is our final product after changing the speed. Not bad for no plugins, I won't lie. I feel this could be a lot more lively. So all I'm just gonna do is duplicate both. Again, we're just gonna use what we have here. Yo, this is our final, final look. Let's have a go. All right, guys, that's it for another video. Hope you lot enjoyed and I hope you learned something. Like I said, it's so much easier than it looks. Again, I applied the same bass technique for Kenzo's video. If, if you guys want to see a version with paid plugins, by all means, I'll show you exactly how I did it. So, enough of that. Hope you lot enjoy the rest of your day or have a good night. And yeah, safe. Catch you lot later.